Welcome to Straight No Chaser. So grab a glass and join your host, your girl MBZ, Pastor C, Thin Bad, and the Chief. in just this afternoon, the Smollett case in Chicago police now saying that Jussie Smollett is officially a suspect in a criminal investigation by Chicago police into potentially filing a false police report with police. Detectives are presenting evidence before a Cook County grand jury. Smollett, as you know, claimed he was attacked in Streeterville last month. Two men saying uh, he says that shouted racial and homophobic slurs at him. All right, welcome to Straight No Chaser, where we never mm. dilute the issues. We only serve the hard stuff. It's your girl, MBZ. Oh, my voice cracked a little bit. But <laughs> as mm. always, I'm joined by my fabulous co-host, Thin Bat. Hey, hey, hey. And the Chief. Hello. Now, this has been a busy, busy week in, in TMZ land and other entertainment news outlets. I mean, we got Tristan Third Trimester Thompson, who's still cheating on Khloe Kardashian, this time with a close friend of his sister's. We have Burberry, yet another high-end designer brand, who released a clothing line with nooses around their models. And, of course, we have the other things like Bernie Sanders running for president and all those exciting things going on. But what we are going to focus tonight is an update on this Jesse Smollett story. It honestly continues to get weirder and weirder. For those who haven't heard, the Empire Star reported to the Chicago police that he allegedly was assaulted by MAGA hat wearing a silence who threw some type of substance on him. I believe he stated that it was bleach, allegedly, uh, at first, and placed a noose around his neck while shouting homophobic slurs to him. Now, as you guys probably remember, when we first reported this, I was Team Jesse, but um, the Chief and Thin Bad both had their doubts um, about the inconsistency of the story, the random... Uh, the random getting tongue tied. It's okay. Yeah, like it Use was your very words. random. Use your words. <laughs> you sound like just <laughs> really, <laughs> honestly. But you know, um, I have to. I have to give it up to my to my sharp co-hosts because they they were really Jeez. they were really on to this guy. Um, but as the investigation continued, the story started unraveling, and now Jesse refuses to talk to the police. Um, actually. An update that I just got six minutes ago. He's actually officially been charged with what? with disorderly conduct for filing a police report. Now, it had been in the talks for a couple of days that if he didn't, you know, go and talk to somebody at, at the Chicago police, they were going to they were going to um, hear the the two brothers that were involved um, with the orchestrated attack in front of a grand jury, and it was about to get really ugly. So we're going to talk about and break down this Jesse Smollett uh, situation for the first half of our show. And for the second half of our show, keeping in line with all things millennial, because, you know, this Jesse Smollett thing, the millennials were all over that, uh, we are going to talk more about my ge generation. So... You know, if there are millennials listening, sit tight because we are going to really get into some things. Parents, grandparents, aunties, godmothers, and other elder statesmen love to give advice to us millennials, whether you, whether you want to hear it or not. 
Mm-hmm. They'll sometimes say things like, you don't know how to cook. What happened to chivalry? What What is this on the paper you wrote? I can't read your writing. The list goes on and on and on. But let's think about this. What basic things have been modified or removed that impact us? Prayer in school has been removed. Home ec and civics classes have been removed. Heck, they're even taking things out of textbooks these days, especially history books. And writing in cursive, you might as well write in in Latin. So <laughs> it's a thing of the past. So what's a millennial to do? So tonight, obviously, we have a full plate. I am excited. So let's jump right in. As always, I want to remind the audience that you can call in at 702-425-7789 or chat with us live. We want to hear from you. So Chief, Chief Chief, <laughs> what's going on with my man's Jesse? And I want to know from you, Anthony Bad, what made you so skeptical of his story initially? And yeah, let's let's jump right into this. Well, I hate to say I told you so, but unfortunately, I want to hear it. Yeah. Well, did you hear that nice intro I gave you? Yeah, you did. Thank okay, you. you're Thank welcome. You. I, I have to be bigger than that. You're yes. right. Okay. okay. I'm, Thank I'm, you. I'm put my bigger hat on. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, as I said when when it was first reported there were some inconsistencies and missing information that just didn't sit right with me. Remember, I think we kind of went over the scene and, and some things that were just obvious. For example, I was saying to you that, well, where is the video footage? If, if this type of horrendous allegation occurred on a subway or anywhere near a subway system, there would be video someplace of, of at least someone running away or him, uh, you know, coming out of the subway or it's just something. And they didn't have it in the subway. None of the surrounding businesses had any video footage. And it, that just seemed odd to me. And then, you know, I started thinking about, well, who walks around with a, a rope around their neck for about 40 minutes, you know, going to seek medical attention? You know, that that didn't seem right. That seemed right. strange. And then, of course, as it moved on and then... Uh, he, he he gave his phone back to the police and it was redacted and, and with the ridiculous reasoning that, well, I have confidential people in there and I don't want people people's numbers. Like like the detectives really had time to say, oh, look, there's Taraji Hens's number. Let's call her. You know, that, that that's just not the way law enforcement professionals operate. They are going to take that information. They're going to take that phone or whatever other technology they have and get to the business of solving that case. So just those types of things among a list of uh, of a long list of things just didn't sit right. And um, even from the very first moment that I heard about this, and it's, it's just unfortunate. Now I know Thin Bass chopping at the bits. <laughs> Man, it is. I mean, I'm, he was so nice. Chief was so nice. He that out there. It, was, it was wonderful. That was, this is the way this thing is rolling out. And same reason, uh, and busy that, you know, the things he pointed out. Who's who's riding around in ten below weather in Chicago with, some... with a with a noose in their car and some bleach <laughs> looking for a little fella to throw some <laughs> coming out of subway to throw some bleach on and, and a noose around his neck. At like they the hog tying Negroes in, in Chicago now. Get out of here. I mean at two something in the morning? Come on. And 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 they were supposed to be wearing MAGA hats, so you could see the MAGA hat, but you couldn't see their face. Come on! Yeah. And they and they knew who you were. If it's ten degrees and you walking around in Chicago, the way that hawk, you bet to have something across your face. <laughs> that, <laughs> and how could the bleach gotten to you? Well, oh yeah. Well, well, well. We know alcohol and bleach doesn't freeze, but. You know, but he, no, but I mean, through your, how to get through the big heavy coat or something that whatever you would have covering you. I mean, they'd right. have to just pull your hood off and beat you down. I mean, well, they have to they had to peek up in there and see. He, I'm assuming you had to have something on like like Matthew Henson right. going to the North Pole, you know, across <laughs> your head with, with fur all around your face. And say, hey, aren't you Jesse Smollett? Aren't you that fella from the damn Empire show? Aren't you that gay guy who was just beat him up, beat that Negro up? No. <laughs> Get the get hold on, Susie. Get the rope off of the cow in the back of the truck. And oh, none of this is on video and none of that. Oh no. They're not gonna see us. Oh, get the hell out of here. <laughs> he thought we were crazy. Oh, poor thing. 
poor thing. And, the, and then this, what they're saying now, he paid him to oh, beat him up. Let's get into that. So let's let's really talk about how this thing has just really unraveled and not in his favor. So first of all, first the first thing was, and I, I remember when um, you and the chief were talking about this on the show. The first thing was he wouldn't give up his phone. Right? Right. Second thing is, once they did give up the phone, they done found Uber, o- Uber uh, receipts of <laughs> they these. They got receipts, yo. <laughs> they got receipts. <laughs> of these two guys, actually, one of them um, was a guest star on Empire. So they were they were two African brothers. And first of all, I do remember also on the show, you guys were like, "Wow, wouldn't it be something if the if the attackers were black?" <laughs> Yep. That's yeah, that that was interesting. Um, so anyways, the two brothers, uh, one of them was a guest star on Empire, and they had found a- an Uber receipt of him sending these two guys to a store. Then they found surveillance of these guys in a store buying ski masks, rope, all this kind of stuff. Then they found surveillance of these two brothers in an elevator with Jesse earlier on. In, in the night, I think, I'm pretty sure, allegedly. Um, so this thing just really unraveled. You know, they went from having no evidence because obviously where he was telling them it occurred or where he was telling them the evidence would be, it was not. And then once they got that phone and they saw those Uber receipts and started digging more into it, you know, they, they really just <laughs> pull, pulled down on Jesse. And it's actually interesting because you know how when when people start not doing right, they start to dig up more on you. And they started digging up other incidents that Jesse had been involved in a couple of years back. And there was actually an incident where um, he had done something where the police were involved and he gave the police a fake name. So this, you know, all of this is just really disappointing because... I mean, you should have seen Twitter. Twitter was in shambles. I mean, you have the gay community like, wow, this is not only you not only did you try to uh, make this uproar of a new white versus black issue because you're saying that these MAGA hat wearing Trump supporters did this to you. Now it's like a homophobic thing. So it's like the gays versus the straights, the black versus the white and all this stuff. So you've just caused this uproar for no reason. There's two problems to that. Number one, now when it actually happens to people, nobody's going to believe them. And number two, President Trump is going to eat this up. He's going to love it. All these conservative media outlets didn't even know who Jesse Smollett was, didn't really care about who he was because of the allegations. And now that it's coming out that it's fake, I, you better believe Fox News and everybody else is covering it now, well, talking about, well, oh, so what's going on? Well, I hope Fox News also remembers Susan Smith. And that case was horrific. Those children were killed, and she did it. But, of course, initially in the investigation, she said it was a couple of black males that carjacked her. So I'm hoping that the folks in Fox News go back in the vault and and pull that out, among a lot of other incidents where people were were saying the suspects were African-American males, and that wasn't the case. So this, you know, of course, one wrong doesn't, equal or right but this you're right ambezi in terms of as people make allegations first thing people are going to think subconsciously is well remember when jesse smollett said something like that happened to him and and it may turn out that someone may experience something just that horrific done by some knuckleheads and people like i don't know let's let's see what let's dig up what we can on the victim as opposed to you know, taking us where the facts will take us. And, you know, another thing is um, it was interesting because you also had to watch the actions of his attorney. Now, the attorney that he had been working with was all gung-ho. They were doing, you know, he was on Good Morning America. And it was interesting because when he was on Good Morning America, the staff at Good Morning America actually said that when he went to do his interview, because obviously I, I, I am 
almost 100% sure it was not a live interview. They chopped and screwed it up as as they normally do. But um, when they went to do his interview, they were very skeptical of his mannerisms, the, the inconsistency.